come off it. This might be, but yeah, they're very good, Lucas. Okay, it's okay. So I'm just trying to do a multi, yeah, Michael <clears throat> G. No, so, so those of you are interested, uh, to start it from the, from the scratch, how exactly, I mean, this was in the very initial days. So, so I'm talking about a really, uh, maybe three years back when I started it, there was no much of a documentation and stuff like that. So we, this was a Bible for us to get those installation done and all those things. And it was pretty well crafted document. So you can rely on it in a much better way. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's a question. Okay, so so you can just Google with Michael Knoll. Okay, so that's, that's just an additional information for you guys in case you're interested. In. All right, so now half of the contents every time gets bounced on me. I have to rather, I have to rather two, three times same videos as I'm not from dev background. Is it fine? Or I'm like, no, absolutely not so very. I mean, uh, I'll ping you the link. Huh? No, I, I want to ping you the link. The reason behind, uh, that's that's a Chinese proverb saying, right? Fishing and what is that? Give him a fish or make him fishing. Oh, come on, what is happening? Or make him learn to do fish. Oh, I lost you guys, is it? Is the sharing is gone? Share screen. I'm assuming now you guys can see me, right? I mean, see, see me in the sense of my screen. Yeah, back. All right. So what I want you guys to do is see, this is the place I mean, I can, there is no harm in for me to sing the, I mean, get you the link, but I want you to learn in that way. So type in Hadoop installation so that you may end up getting a much better link than me. So that can also happen. So, so installation, just type in installation. Uh, and then yeah, Michael. Michael, maybe spelling, you might be wrong, but Michael, no, if you give the first link, something should be this thing. So if you want, I'll send his name to you guys, but rest of things, I want you guys to do it. Michael, no. So this is the link and then he has given n number of tutorials. It's a pretty good stuff. So try to go through those. Yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, in case if you have some time, do it because it's, see, that initial Josh might be there to get everything grasping, but literally impossible stuff. So, because I have gone through this stage before you guys. So, so I understand. So, I mean, if you are trying to get information from, you have really an ocean left over I mean, on top of you. So huge, humongous number of documents and all those things available. If you go to net and then a lot of information you can gather by that YouTube videos, so many things. Okay, being all that fun being said, I, I think I wanted to say something. Um, and yeah, uh, uh, Tiwari, to answer your questions, it's pretty much fine. So when I started it, it, it took me, um, okay, let, I mean, just some funda behind, just two minutes, okay. Um, when I started it, I started with almost, I guess, 10 minimum big data YouTube is what I started with. Minimum 10 complete course of YouTube videos I had completed before getting a grip of it. Okay, I mean, so absolutely no issues. You need not, I mean, it's not from the dev, dev environment or something. So it's it's no harm in getting, repeating it. But make sure my concept or my, the way I do stuff is, I just want to take a paper and keep it and I just start drawing it. So, so that's what I would really call it as a learning and then how exactly you'll be able to recollect it. Okay, so so whatever concept you're talking about, just make sure you yourself take a piece of paper, draw it and see it if you're able to things, connect those dots and then see, okay, I mean, this is exactly how it should look like. I mean, that confidence level is what really you should come up with. So then if that is something which you're able to do it, that that's your perfect, I mean, you mastered the art, that's it. Otherwise, I mean, if there is some missing link here and there, I mean, there is something more you need to learn. So you may have to again, go back and refer it. So make sure you are having that able to visualize what I speak. I mean, that, that's one, one challenge between, I mean, if you don't have an I2A -I contact, so that's, that's where something you guys have to do it. So some concept being said, make sure you're having visualize. So make sure you are having a pen and paper just to scribble around and then see if things are pretty well connected. That way you, you understand stuff much, much closely. Okay. All the fundas behind. So let's, let's pick up today's stuff. No issues. Everybody.
Okay. So today what you're going to see is really the backbone, what it started with the Hadoop environment or the big data environment. So uh, definition, real life exa example, building principle, map reduce function, word count. So word count is typically what we're going to deal with. Okay. And what we're going to deal, this is a key, key stuff or the backbone you talk about mapper and reducer. So basically in one word, what we say about is map reduce and that's the key behind a distributed computing environment okay so we're going to see how exactly that map reducing stuff works uh map reducing in the simple words splitting a job into sub jobs okay let's let's bring more perspective to that particular statement mapping the sub jobs into different processor okay collecting the output from the preprocessor and reducing the output in the processor in the final result okay exactly so Let's, uh, let me explain that first, and then let's bring into some sort of a real-time example. So what we are trying to do is a map reduce scenario. We are trying to uh, do it in terms of an electronic voting machine. How exactly map reduce is Hadoop one, one dot star, right? Yes, exactly, that's, that's, that's one dot star. But even two dot star supports map reduce thing, which is nothing but the yarn. You can have map reduce run on top of yarn, okay, so that, and multiple other step. One dot star had only map reduce, whereas two dot star has yarn, which can accomplish uh, map reduce step, and many other spark or anything can be run on top of that yarn environment. Okay, so let's look into more when we speak about what is map reduce. So let me bring in my old some of those figures, and then try to explain it. Hmm. Exactly was that? Yeah, this one. All right. Uh, so let's let's assume now. First thing, what you need to understand when exactly this map reduce comes into play, right? So we spoke about two scenario, right? One is storing the data. Okay. The next one is processing the data. So that's a typical two scenarios what we have, right? Storing the data is nothing but writing the data into my big data environment, right? So once the data is written, or once my files, a humongous one terabyte. 500 GB of all those data has been written into my hard drive. There should be some means I need to, I mean, I, I don't want to just for the namesake place my file, right? After maybe five or 10 days, I'm going to retrieve it back and then do some analytics on top of it. Bring some report out of that particular data that has been stored in, correct? I mean, that's the whole and sole intention behind storing a file, correct? So what I'm going to do is, our scenario, what I'm going to explain now, our, some of the shapes you guys are familiar with. Uh, think of one computer system. Let's color it as maybe pink in color to start with. Uh, another computer. I have another computer. And let, let's bring in one more guy. Okay. And now this is these are the slaves for us or the or the uh, okay. What are the slaves called? What is the name given for the slave? This computer? Data node, great, yeah. Uh, just, just making sure you guys are not sleeping. Uh, next guy is going to be my master, right? This is the master. <clears throat> now, what the scenario? What you're going to talk about? I have some files kept over this, this, this. Let's let's take up a scenario where every of this particular node has one file. That is nothing but our emp.txt file. Okay, and this is the guy which I need to get processed. So this is a file. And this is another file. I mean, same file, different block of it. A, B, C, and D. We we are discussing about that stuff, right? And this, okay. Let 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 it be only with these three guys. Okay. So now our intention is, I need to pick up these files, and start doing some process. So what we spoke about, this is employee.txt file, for, for example. And our case scenario, what we spoke about was finding out those employees whose salary was greater than three lakhs, if I know wrong. Okay, so that's exactly what, we're, what our case study was, right? I mean, or the scenario which you spoke about, my requirement. Find out all the employees, and this is a huge file, okay? This three combined together makes one single file, which is a very huge file. And my intention is, out of which I need to pick up only those guys whose salary is greater than three lakhs per annum, okay? So that, that's our whole intention. So that's the program I'm going to write. So now how exactly that program is going to work is what, what we're going to see as a map reduce step, okay? 
So one scenario what we saw here is, let me bring in a text box. And so how exactly? So first string should be my, um, my, uh, salary, sal greater than, um, three lakh dot PRG. Okay. So this is my program just doing or dot Java. So let's, let's, let's make some meaningful naming to it. So dot Java. So this is my Java program, which is going to do a, some processing, which is going to pick up. I mean, there is some sort of an algorithm that I'm going to write in, uh, in this particular program. Okay. And that program is the one which is going to run on this node, this node and this node. Okay. And then input file for me is going to be emp.txt. Okay. And I'm going to give a comment stating that that should be the result should be kept in results dot txt. So that's, that's how exactly we're going to have. So basically this is my program. This is my input file and this is my output file. Okay. All right. So that's, that's how it should look like. So now once you're going to take this program, how exactly a system is going to behave is. Okay. Let me ask one question before that. And what are this note in terms of processing? What are this master called as master name in terms of processing? What are the master note master note for processing? Yeah. I expected this answer. That's why I asked you. Great. So job tracker. Okay. Now let me drill down more. Now that was job tracker was for Hadoop, which version one dot star version and Hadoop two dot star version. Who was the master? Who was the master? No, not really. Who was the master for Hadoop two dot star version? Great resource manager. Let's name him now. So that, so remember some of the so resource manager is staying over here and, uh, and who was a slave? Anyone recollect what was the slave name? Node, uh, node manager, it was node manager, not name manager. Okay. Node manager. So node manager and node manager is going to run over here. Okay. And one more guy who got introduced. You remember we, we, we introduced a contract guy over here in our last session, a contractor, uh, application master. Great. Great. Sorry, it is application manager, correct. <clears throat> yeah, so basically what we're gonna do is now now from the client, let me let me draw a client too. I have a client over here. Now client is nothing but my my normal laptop. Let me at least make it look like a laptop. Okay, it's done. All right, so now I'm I'm from my this this is where this particular program was written and compiled and all those things. Okay. And now for Java guys, don't get confused. I mean, it's, it's a compiled version of it. I mean, it's not dot Java. You should have that class file Java created. Not, I, I don't want to bring in all those fundas. I mean, Java, because there are a lot of guys who may not be Java expert as who may not be exposed to Java environment. So, so for the benefit of everyone, we are just going to name it as a, just a Java file. Yeah. It's just a jar file. Correct. Dot class file. So that one, that particular is going to get passed on to my node manager. Okay. And what needs to happen is, this is what we call as map reducer. It's a distributed computing, right? That's what the funda behind what you're discussing now mapper and a reducer. So first what should happen is a process should be in place where I'm my first initial process. So how exactly a filter filtering needs to be done or something needs to be done that will run in the first phase over here. Okay. In this node also it's going to run and this node also is going to run, which is my simple mapper mapper is going to run in this 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 and this okay we're going to discuss more about that but first instant just remember that map, mapper is going to run here mapper is going to run here and mapper is going to run over here mapper is nothing but a small class file a class file when you say it's just a small program okay small program is going to which is written inside this particular guy okay you're going to get more elaborate information of of that how exactly that's going to happen. So don't, don't think too much into detail. Just try to understand it. One small portion, which is known as a mapper is going to run over here, run over here and run over here. So once output comes from this particular guy, okay, let's, let's make it as an output. 
which is maybe slightly different in color. Let's make it as purple as my output now, okay? So this is my output, okay? And that's gonna come and sit, sit here only, this particular guy only, inside this guy only. Okay, this is my output, okay? And this is also output from this particular guy. And this is also an output from this particular guy, okay? So now I have output in three different files sitting all together, right? Now what I need, I need to combine this, all three of the guys together, right? And then make it one single file. And then that single file is, needs to be named as result.txt and store it, however it is, okay? So first process of getting this particular small file created is called as a map process for me, okay? Once my map is com completed, once the map is completed, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have something known as a reducer. So what I'm trying to do over here is now this is my reducer, which is going to be a red color for me, which is going to get come and sit over here. What it means is from this guy, let me do another shape now. So from here, here, from here, from here, it's need to come and store it to one. So there is no hard and fast rule where which exact computer it needs to go and the reducer needs to be running. It can happen anywhere. Okay. So very simple stuff. Mapper is running, creating this file. Here also Mapper is running, creating this file. This is created. So three different files is created in three different computer altogether. Now what I need to do, I need to combine all these things together and bring it to one single computer. And then that's my end output. Okay. So this is a basic, basic skeletal level view of what exactly is happening. Is this clear for everyone? And there might be a lot of questions, how exactly, what program I should be writing in my mapper, reducer, forget about all these things. We are going to have a clear picture of it. But what is happening is clear with everyone. Great. All right. So I'm assuming everyone is fine with that concept. Okay. Yes three shears, so I, I would assume it's pretty fine with everyone. All right, now let's move on. Let's move on with, with scenarios which you spoke about. It's a votes, voting machine is what, uh, what we're gonna speak about, okay? So how exactly we're gonna drill down each of those components. We have seen a mapper, we have seen a reducer and stuff like that. We're gonna drill down each of those components. All right? Uh, I'm sorry guys, just I need to, I need to attend a call, just give me, Give me half a second. Uh, yeah, sorry for that. Okay, so now what we're trying to do is how exactly an electoral voting mechanism works. That's what we are trying to bring with the uh, map, reduce, map, map reduce concept. Okay, so let's read in what exactly is written in terms of how things work. So how is a voted counted? So voting, I mean, everyone has casted their vote, everything has happened. And how exactly after, once the voting is completed, how exactly each everyone have an electronic vo vo voting machine happening, right? So that in terms of map reduce, how exactly that's going to work. That's that's exactly what you're going to see over here now. Okay, so input split, leave about that concept that we're going to see later. Uh, I think yeah, we already we already know about input split, right? That's correct, right? You guys are aware of input split. Oh yeah, great, fine. So input split now map method. Each polling booth EVM are given to an individual polling counting officer. Okay, that's. Look like that. Map method. Each counting officer get a ballot count for his respective polling booth for each party. Right? So each counting officer. So so let's look at in the diagrammatic view in the next slide. So each counting officer get a ballot count. So ballot count in sense now we have entire EBM machine, right? For his respective polling booth for each party. This is done parallelly for each polling booth. Now, reduce method, ballot count, ballot count is each booth under the parliament six sheet. I think there's too much of a funda being given. Let's let's move directly into the into the figure. All right. So now, this is exactly what is happening. So one guy, 
is having multiple multiple stuff now so multiple stuff in the sense he might be getting the electronic voting machines from different okay uh, don't take it as a electronic voting machine that may confuse you just think it as a normal normal paper where you have the candidates list candidates listed okay that's exactly how you need to know that um and how might be a little tough for me to explain with this diagram all right so how exactly that's going to work now think about these three other candidates okay and these three are the this this is one officer next officer and the third third officer okay and he need to count from different how many number of vote each candidate is receiving right so that that's where he's going to take a paper and then do a, just like a cricket tally one 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 and then cross it one five so that's very very traditional way of doing it is what we are going to see over here now so he just increasing one by one so he's finding it out uh, so red is a candidate green is a candidate blue is a candidate right so each polling booth so each particular location so think about this is from uh, uh, so since it's, it's multiple guys from here so let's make it as uh, i know most of the bangalore locations is bangalore this is the bangalore stuff this is the mysore stuff and this is somewhere else somewhere else in karnataka okay so three guys sitting and doing the counting so this from the bangalore what he's doing is uh he's taking how many number of votes this particular red has got okay so he need to take account of it right from from entire bangalore he's he's collecting this information right exactly the same way this guy is also collecting entire information so he may get a different count he may get a different count and he may get a different count for each of these guys right so now once you're done so you get he gets a count of 10 for his red green 20 blue 40 and, and and similar similar ways of count he also is getting correct so different count is getting each officer is receiving different count of it correct so once that count is dead so in order for for us to know how many number of count this particular red guy has got so it's as simple as this right 10 plus 20 plus 30 right 50 plus 60 is what the red guy has got so for doing that what is the simple mechanism i need to take this red guy and send it to one single location and do the count and then sit it right and take all this blue guy send it to a one location and then do a count exactly the same way with the green right and that's after that i can just it's a very straightforward step for me just do a count and then present it over here so in terms of mapper and reducer process this process of taking a red so and just mapping a one to it just the moment one vote is counted from a red i just put a one to it so that process of assigning a one to a particular candidate is nothing but a mapper process okay that's a mapper process and making a final count is a reducer process okay so in case i mean if it's not a crystal clear i'm just going to make it as with the word count example that that makes it much more clear so so don't worry about if you're not able to get the complete stuff of it let me see what more is there bringing up yeah key value pairing oh sorry okay so this is a mapper and this is a reducer okay and in between in between we have made a shuffle over here right we have made this guy blue come over here this mating this come over here and this guy come over here this particular phase is known as sort and shuffle okay this particular phase is known as sort and shuffle so we are, we are making it one single diagram so sort and shuffle there is a sorting happening and there is a shuffling happening so this process where you're just assigning one to it so let's see how exactly that's done so let me open a notepad okay session number five let's name it a session number five session five How exactly it's going to like so you have red green and blue correct so basically what's going to happen is so this guy this guy is taking a ballot paper and see okay one vote for red okay then he sees okay there is one more one more for red so how exactly mapper is going to work is exactly like this red okay one more vote went for red so he's going to make it as another one okay and again we saw one for green next one was the green next one was for blue one then he found blue again one then green one 
Then again, green one, again, green one. The green might be a leading party. So, and and then make it as, uh, what is that, blue one, okay? Something of this sort, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, so this is exactly in the mapping process, as simple as this. And when you, when you see the program, even the program, what you're going to see is just assigning one to it. So that's what, that's what even you're going to see in the program, so which, which might be in the next session, I believe, because we don't see that stuff coming over here. So, so it's as simple as that. Take a red, which is R, assign one to it. Just put a one next to R. And our intention is, so now our mapping process is completed, right? And this exact similar kind of a scenario is going to come up even over here, right? So this is for one first officer, officer number one. Okay, let's even mark that. Officer number one. One. Okay, and then, so let's bring in only two guys are there who is doing the count, ballot count, okay? Uh, two. So let's, let's say that this is a very, very less populated area. So this is only two or three guys are there. Uh, let's, let's bring in. Okay, here blue is leading now. All right. So basically, so how exactly? So this this stuff is done. So the officer one has done the mapping. Officer two has also done the mapping. This process mapping now. So now, so think of what you need to think over here is this is one computer, this is another computer. Okay, that that's how you need to visualize stuff. So after that, what you need to know is this red. Wherever this red comes in. It's, it's going to go over here. This, this particular red is going to go over here. Okay. And wherever the green comes, that green is going to come over here. So that, that basic stuff is done over here. Okay. So let's do first sorting. Okay. So first, when I say sorting, what's going to happen over here? Let's, let's see that stuff first. So when I say sorting, so let's bring it in one. So this is what exactly is going to happen. So these two guys will be picked up. And it's going to come over here. And that's all right. One, two, three. Yes. And G. Now G is turn. So exactly like this. The sort is going to happen. So in the very sequence way, sort is going to happen. So along with the sort, it's going to do a shuffling also. So when I, sort of sh when I say shuffling, how exactly is going to happen is, instead of writing this one, 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 what's going to happen is, it's going to do a shuffle process. It's going to look like something like this. So instead of, so B, I have this many number of step. And G, so it just looks for G, one, okay. Now is there any more G? There's one more G is coming. One more G is again coming. One more G is coming. Okay, so that's it. The next one, red, right? So red, exactly the same process. One, one more one. And then it's going to look down. That's it. So only two. So this is how sort and shuffle. After the sort and shuffle, you should be able to see something of this sort. Okay. And here also. Here also is going to be, you are going to see exactly the similar one. One. Uh, B has two guys. So one comma one. Right. And G has only one guy. Okay. So this particular computer sort and shuffle looks like this okay and this particular computer sort and shuffle looks like this and just to give you a little bit more i mean some someone was thinking okay how what exactly is happening over here so this is just think like in temporary memory and temporary space this is doing the comp computation and keeping it keeping it right ready okay after this is done either this guy needs to go over here or this guy needs to come over here for the reduce process so what do you think should the reduce process should be now? So in case if it's just a ballot count, what exactly should happen now? Two to one. No, I didn't get that question. What do you mean two to one? So this is this process in terms of what you're talking about is we are going to have a real time scenario of counting number of candidates. I mean, the number of vote that a particular candidate has got candidate has got merge it. Exactly. So merge. No, merge is going to happen in the redu uh, reduce phase. So how exactly merge needs to happen is bring this guy, this guy together. Both these guys needs to come together, right? And then 
exactly the similar stuff should happen. All right? So this is going to be, okay, so I have made a slight goof up over here. This should not be like this. B, G, and R, right? B, G, and R. So that also should follow the exact same sequence because it's exactly one single program that's going to go over here. And now this is going to combine together. This both stuff will be combined together and what, how exactly it's going to look like? Let's let's bring in. Yeah, let's make a division over here. And then now, according to my current process, what we are telling is the merge or the reducer is going to run over here. So, so how exactly the reducer is going to look like is let's let's bring in this guy over here. Okay, to this computer. And now B, how many more? One more one. Yeah. So one comma one is going to happen over here. And G, comma one is going to happen over here. Comma one is going to happen over here. This together is going to happen. So all so data from every system has come and collect got collected accumulated over here. Now the reduce phase is very simple. Only stuff that need, needs to be done in the reduce phase is just do a count of it, right? So how many is this? Just do a count one, two, three, four, five. That's it. That's what the reducer is going to do, and that is exactly how the logic is also. So. It will be just take this point and then just accumulate the sum. That's as simple as that program. One, two, three, four, five. Here also it's five. And then reduce, I mean, sorry, the red is one, two, three, three. That's it. So this is how exactly your mapper and reducer is going to work. Okay. Now let's, let's bring in uh, a quick word count example over here. An address book related to a name key and a contact information value. Associate with an account value, index page or which is it occurs on a computer file, allows sort. Okay, I don't want to do that. Individual components of functions called like map and reduce have their derived functions programming, C++ which applies to the like divide and conquer. The developer focus on expressing transformation. All right. Now let's let's bring in exact same example with a word count example. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's take our notepad. Let's take our notepad. And then, so I'm assuming this is fine. So I'm going, just going to remove all the stuff and bring in a word count over here. Now let's bring in. How do us was uh, found by deck? I mean, just something. Uh, how do uh, develop develop? In the year 2004, right? That's that's when he actually did it. Oh. Yellow elephant was the icon given for the Hadoop architecture. Um, Hadoop is hot in market currently. Okay, let's let's pick this up now. So let's let's talk about one single machine scenario is what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So what's gonna happen is Hadoop was founded by Dev. So so a mapper, how exactly a mapper should look like? So mapper is gonna have Hadoop. Okay, so so how exactly the mapper process? We are talking about mapper. Now, we, we are going to, we, <laughs> Shaji is teaching us how to do. Okay, great. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what we're trying to do over here is mapper and a reducer. Mapper 
and a reducer. So what most stuff I need to get over here is something I missed. All right. So how exactly a system is going to look into the mapper, okay? So simple thing, what it does is system does exactly the same thing what we spoke about, Hadoop. One, was, one, founded. Okay, let me copy this and then keep splitting it. That'll be much easier for me then. So Hadoop was till here we are done, right? Then founded, it just take it, put an assign a one to it and buy, it's going to take and put a one to it. Okay, and with the full stop, it will be take and it's take a one to it. Okay, this is mapping process, right? So, one. One. Okay, let's reduce this. I mean, don't want to waste time doing too much of funders. Now I'll, I'll, I want you guys help to understand now. I'll make you process it. So now what is the next phase? So mapper is completed for us, mapping is done. So mapping is nothing but assigning each. So this is typically what we're gonna talk about is a word count example, okay? Let me, I'll, I'll brief about what exactly is a word count, word count. Word count is nothing but how many number of occurrence of each words are there existing in this particular thing. So basically what should happen is one, two, three, four i should get four at the end of it still so but we are taking i think only two lines right so one two and two so so basically the answer, the the result should look like hadoop two okay this is how it's exactly it should look like so that's our intention i mean our business requirement is find the number of words that exist in this particular paragraph so so right now we are considering only these two lines okay and was should also get repeated one and one right and founded, is there any repetition? No. So remaining all stuff should be just one, 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 one. Okay. So that's our key intention. So mapper process is just doing assigning one to it. And now what we said, after mapper, what should be the process? Sort and shuffle. Sort and shuffle, great. So sort and shuffle. Oh, okay. This is also an intelligent system, is it? Okay. Sort and shuffle is going to do. Let me remove this 2004. It's giving me pain. in some year, fine, okay? So this, uh, now what should happen? Sort and shuffle, it's as simple as this. Hadoop, it's gonna take up, no, it's, this should not be any uppercase, lowercase, it'll be treated different. So Hadoop, exactly one comma one, right? Everyone is clear with that. So that's that's what's gonna happen. Now it's gonna do a sorting. I mean, even this alphabetic sorting is what the next, it's go, it needs to happen, okay? So, I mean, I, do, I just don't know, yeah, exactly, exactly, let me, thanks, Sukma. so that's, you made my job easy. Let me just copy paste this one. Exactly, so this is how it's gonna look like. So if I do a copy paste, okay, that's also another trouble now. All right, so this is how exactly it's gonna look like. Okay, so how do one comma one, was one comma one, by one and tag one, right? This is exactly an N and D year and all those things is gonna happen. So now, post with simple process, which is nothing but reducer for me which is going to be Hadoop two was one and uh, oh, it was two, right? It was two and Doug one and uh, that's it, time being, and by one. <clears throat> by one, right? And now B should come first. So it'll be already a sorted record. Okay, now W should be the last. Duck should come just on top of this, right? So this is how exactly you're gonna see your result. This is how you're gonna see the result. So this is exactly what Mapper and Reducer does. Now, let me break, I mean, let me put a whole logical word for many questions. I'm pretty much sure that there is gonna be some sort of a high level question. So in case that comes up, I'm just gonna park park it aside and us telling you guys that, yeah, you are going to get these things clarified 
uh, pretty soon with another slides to come in. But this high level skeleton, I mean, I just want to try to bring in one by one, step by step. So that's my intention. So till here, is it is it fine? Or is there any question? So that let's clear this and then, then move forward. Any questions for anyone? Or if it's if it's really, everyone is fine with this concept. Is there a scenario where a mapper executes but not reducer? Um, yes, there is a scenario, but we are, we are going to take that up uh, later. We can have just mapper without a reducer. Yes, possible are there, possibility are there. So in case if your intention was just to get this one comma one comma one, such kind of a count is what you have wanted. So then I need only mapper. But yeah, we're going to answer those. In, the, in detail in the latest session. I think we all uh, we can find and get that. We I think we all the words are only one time. So mapper results will be the final one. Uh, no, reduce a result is going to be the final one. Oh, you, you, you're continuing the question which Sapna has asked? Mac? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. So if that is the case, yeah, that reducer output, uh, mapper output is going to be the final one. Correct. Map data is not stored even after it has been reduced, right? Map data is, no, that's correct. So that is also slightly advanced. So we're going to see all the things, but just to answer your question, yes, that's correct. So mapper data, what you're going to speak about here, this particular data will be a temporary data stored over here. This data is temporary data. This is temporary, this is temporary. Once it's been picked up and given over here and made this reducer step, this will get deleted. This is gone, this is gone, and this is gone. Once this final output is available, it, the system will automatically delete from the stuff. Yeah, that's correct. Any more questions? Okay, so I am assuming data du replication also applicable on reduced output. Exactly, that is applicable on the reduced output. Reduce output, whenever it stores, that's, that's what one thing I said. Uh, any data, irrespective of whatever funda that you're doing, any data that is going to sit in the Hadoop environment, okay, that will be exactly following the same funda which you spoke about. Replication, uh, and what else is that? Block size, all those things. The, if you want to have an entry to the Hadoop environment, you need to follow this thumb rule. Then only you'll be allowed to get inside the premises of Hadoop. That's how it is. And one more in that case, let me answer that is this would have been a slightly advanced topic, but since that question came up, so this stuff, this guy, the temporary output over here, this is not in the Hadoop environment. Okay, this will be, okay, uh, no, forget it. Forget it, I don't want to bring in that. that, that that's gonna confuse you guys. Fine, everything. Just wipe out what I said just now. Everything is fine. So we are going to cover that in slightly advanced topic. So I don't want to get you guys you're so confused. Multiple data processing is possible in Hadoop. Like first level map reduce, then it gives its output to the next, etc. No, that's not possible. So in case if it's need, you need to have another program in place where you're going to pick up output from here and then you can loop it. You can chain it with, with there are multiple tools available where you're going to chain it. But <clears throat> one single program doing it? No, that's the mapper and reducer. That's that's the end of it. So after that, in, just like in the real production environment, there is another tool which we are going to see what exactly it's called. Uh, zookeeper, not zookeeper. Yeah, cha chaining. No, not chaining mapper and reducer. Once the reducer produces output, once the producer produces output, that needs to be an input for another system. That needs to be picked up, do some other processing, again another input, just like that. Uzi, Uzi, yeah. The, the word, some of those words are not coming in my mind. So that's, that's scheduler is known as Uzi. So that's the one who's going to help you out doing the scheduling stuff. Okay. All right. So let's move on now. Yeah, so this is, oh yeah, here we have a typical example. So what are the main components of MapReduce, map, MapReduce job? So right now, the main component of MapReduce job is mapper and reducer, that's it. I have a mapper component, I have a reducer component. 
yeah driver we are not introduced now so we don't we don't want to get into driver stuff right now so right now just understand we have a mapper we have a reducer okay the, just, just two things yeah i mean you're right mac but i just want to i mean just be, with the benefit of others also i'm just trying to get it. but no issues i mean you can put in your answers no issues um all right so so right now what we're going to see is uh So this is okay. Typically, our I mean Harub and all those things instead, DRB, River, all those things is what we're going to see now. Okay. Okay. So DBR. So what I want to tell you is yeah. So see, I mean this is exactly the same stuff what we spoke about, right? So you can you can you can correlate that, and let's let me explain with that stuff. Okay. You can correlate with that one single line, another one, and another one. Okay. So now the mapping process is running. This particular guy is running this mapper, right? And this is the next line is being picked up by another another mapper. So now what is happening is now what you need to understand is inside a okay. When I say mapper and reducer, okay. It's like the mapper is nothing but it's a it's a program, okay. For those who those of you guys, I mean, not from the programming background or anything. I mean, how many of you are not from the programming back? I mean, even even if you're testing this thing, you you have some. I mean, any programming background, you have not done the programming at all. You you completely do some sort of an administrative task or something of that sort. I think someone um, I, I forgot who was that. Someone was from uh, marketing side or something, right? I recall. I mean, I I forgot who exactly was it. This is Tiwari. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. So yeah, for the benefit of, I mean, so, so no harm. So you can just understand it. Let me explain. Okay. That that's all right. Yeah. So we may have to just. I mean, some of those topic might be a little. I mean, over bounces for you in that case. But yeah, when pig and hive comes in. Which is substitute for the Java program that may that that's the time you may be feeling more comfortable. So basically, a business analyst or such kind of a guy are the one who's going to use Pig, or or any of such kind of a tools. Okay, so for right now maybe a slightly, but but make sure. I mean, it's not a big stuff. I'm talking about a big funder. You should be able to grab, grasp it. So for your benefit, I just want to bring in another figure over here, and I forgot what exactly I was trying to do. Uh, tick, 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 tick. What exactly was that? Okay, yeah, program stuff. Okay, so so what what I want to guys to visualize is let me pick this guy now. How do I crop it? Yeah, crop it. Select. Rolex, V. Let me move and put it down. Okay, how do I want to visualize this? Instead, let me let me open a new new stuff over here. Then disturbing that. So this is a program. Okay, this is my big program. Okay, so right now we are not segregating different uh, mapper and reducer and all those things. What I want to make you understand is I have written a big Java program. Okay, this portion is a mapper for me. Okay. This portion is a mapper for me, and this portion is a reducer for me. And yeah, as Mac or someone has mentioned, and the remaining this is a driver for me, which we are, which we are not discussed till now. Okay, so when I say this is a big program, these are all sub programs. So those are not from the Java background or some program. What what I want you to understand is program inside a program. So this is a sub program. The sub program is nothing but a mapper program. This sub program is nothing but a reducer program. This is nothing nothing but my reducer program. So let's name it, name those guys exactly like that. So mapper. Now it's a reducer. And it's driver. Driver. And all the time, just think about the word count example. What what we spoke about. Okay. So that's exactly what we're going to uh, make our task easy. So now, in terms, if I'm going to write a mapper program, just like just with that example of that B C D and all those some of those 
how exactly it's going to look like is, I mean, some of the syntax, leave about uh, public static void main and all those things, okay? So instead, what we're going to do is, I'm going to write assign, uh, what is that? Let's, let's shorten that B, bear, and, uh, and okay, B, C, D, let's make it just B, C, D. Okay, so assign B, one, okay? Assign, this is exactly, I mean, this is pseudocode I'm writing, assign C, one. It's the word count example I'm talking about. Assign D, one. This is exactly how you're going to write your mapper program. And mapper program, it'll be just one or two lines of program. This is as simple as that. Two, two, line, two or three lines of Java program. That's exactly the mapper program is going to do. And now, some magic happens in between this mapper and reducer. And let me, let me just do a layer for that now. Uh, right, let me put this and put some, put some purple color in between. Maybe let's put a red color in between. So between these two phase, there is some sort of a magic happening and that magic phase is known as a, oh, I'll come and change the color. This magic, Phase is known as sort and shuffle phase, which is automatically taken care of by the by the Hadoop environment or the MapReduce system. So you are not going to write any program for this particular phase, this particular all this stuff, not this one. I'm talking about this particular one, changing from one system to another system, doing the shuffling, doing doing all this hard work. So this is a core stuff taken care of by the Hadoop architecture, and this is the one. I mean. The performance or the powerfulness of this really matters, okay? And that's how we they keep refining it, make some new and new progress to this, uh, coming with a new kind of a fast processing in each, each and every of those releases. And this is the shuffling process. We call it a sort and shuffle. So this is the sort and shuffle process, okay? So that sort and shuffle process is what we saw, which is going to happen over here, which programmer need not bother at all, okay? And how exactly is going to come and give it to you? So this output, okay, this mapper output is going to look like, oh man, this is one which I hate. No, I can't use this. Okay, let's time being. So comma one, comma one, comma one, comma one. Okay, maybe here. It's going to look like, comma one, comma one. That's it. And the next one, one comma one, comma one, oh, sorry, comma one. There is no two gonna happen over here because that's how our logic will be written, it's okay. So this is fine. So this is exactly the output of mapper will look like, right? So that's what I said. So now, as far as the pseudocode over here and the reducer is concerned, pretty straightforward and simple. What I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna say, whatever is this portion, okay? Just take this portion. So so line by line processing is what gonna happen. So this particular is what I'll be processing first. Next, I'll be processing this particular line. After that, I'll be processing this particular line. So in that case, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take, this will be grouped together. I'm just going to say second part. Uh, sum up. Sum of second part. Okay. I mean, just a second part. Done. All this, all this is what we're going to, and then that's all I'm going to say. So one key thing what you need to notice over here is, uh, okay, that key part I'm going to just again park it aside. I'm going to, I'm going to bring that concept a little later. Okay. So this is all time being you need to know. So the mapper logic I'm going to write, just assigning this, this one, 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 one. Reducer logic is just taking up this how many number of guys and and summing it up. That's all. That's all my mapper and reducer stuff is. With that, I, I finish my program. And in my driver, I'm, what I'm going to say is, so I need, I just need to name my mapper. So basically, my mapper one. So think like it's mapper one. I'm going to name this particular program, sub program, which I said, right? And reduce a one. So I just need to sell, I just need to tell in my neighbor, okay, mapper is, my mapper is,
mapper one and my reducer is reducer one reducer one so so that so the, the moment a Java program executes, what is going to happen is first instance, it's going to come and hit this driver. And it's going to ask this particular driver, okay, which is your mapper and which is the reducer. So this can be any variable name, okay? This need not be a mapper at all. So this is, I'm going to name it as even, okay, this is for you, charge map one, or then there is no need of a one, right? Charge reduce. So just for the making you understand, charge reduce. Map one, charge red, charge red. Okay, so charge map, charge red, reducer. But this name would be a key name. It should be actually reducer. All right. So, so what will happen? So, if that is going to be the case, this also name needs to be changed. Exactly. It should be a charge map. It should be charge reduce. And then this will automatically point to this particular guy. This is going to automatically point to this this particular guy. And then it start execution. Okay. Slightly confusing. But completely confusing. Okay. Uh, okay. Not bad. All right. So, so we have reached the next stage of it. And now, if everyone is fine with it, we're going to go to the next phase of it. Now, drill down slightly more deep into it. Okay. So we have assigning it, we have done a, done, a, done a computation, and now we're going to drill down a little bit more. Okay, and that's exactly the time which I wanted to do a map and reduce this stuff or a key value pairing now. I'm, I just want to bring in this stuff. Okay, now let's take up our old example of this guy. Okay, now forget about this again, once again. We're going to go back with this stuff. Okay, I just don't want to delete this. It'll be painful for me to write it all over again. Okay, so now take this example, wipe out all this concept. Now you have something, some sort of a skeleton built-in. Now let's start doing this once again, okay? So now this is my text file, okay? How exactly Hadoop is gonna work, okay? It's basically every data, input data and output data coming from a system from to a mapper, and an output, let's, let's bring in that with another figure now. Okay, so input, there should be an input, and there should be an output. There should be an input, there should be an output, right? And let's name it as input, and then output, then this is going to be an input. Uh oh, this is going to be an input. And this is going to be an output. Okay. So, so what typically should be this input is nothing but my row file, which I have over here, right? After that, it's create this particular output and that particular output is nothing but an input. Uh oh, what is this guy doing? Shape, come over here, put another color, maybe a blue. And this output is nothing but input for my reduced process. Okay, this will take us an input for reduced process. Take this slightly with a pinch of salt, okay? Because there's actually not really over here, there is another guy, sort and shuffle, which he already spoke about, right? So time being, let, let's, let's make it like that way. And this output, or why we need to do that. So, so this output, let me name this guy over here as correct only. Now you guys know sort and shuffle, right? So sort and shuffle. Let's expand this guy. Sort and shuffle. Okay, the magic phase where there is no program that a developer needs to write. This is done automatically by the Hadoop architecture or the Hadoop guy, Hadoop environment takes care of doing this stuff. So this output should, should go as input for this guy. Okay, Chandan, I'll come back to your 
question uh input over here now and this output this is output and this output should go as input for this guy and this output should go input for this guy okay so hope everyone is fine with that let's put a mark over here so that no one get confused from where to where is the diagram and here also is the here also is the guy okay so this from here to here this is the input and that do, does the processing creates an output that output is taken by the reducer and then it comes that this is our final output this is our final output okay so now now let me bring in this figure now okay so hadoop was found this stuff now what we need to understand is hadoop is going to going to treat each independent light separately so this particular guy will be treated this particular guy will process this, this guy will be processed first next is going to process this guy after that this guy and this guy okay that's how exactly the plan and that's that's exactly the reason why we had hadoop was founded by doug and after that hadoop just says one 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 like this right so that's how exactly it's going to get processed. This one single line will get processed, another single line will be processed, and let's keep repeating. So think of in, in one single file, okay? One single file, if I had one, two, three, four. So our example, one file had four lines of data, okay? So what line will be processed first? It'll go, second line will process, third line and fourth line, and then it's complete the process, and the end output, output file, the temporary file which you spoke about will get created, okay? Now the key fund, another helper, I mean, the help that comes up with the Hadoop is, you just need to treat only, write your program, thinking in mind, only this first, first line alone. Okay, you don't need to repeat, put it in a loop. So normally, if I want to do this processing, what I should be doing, for line, till end of file, I mean, till while, or what? Till end of file, right? Till or while or whatever. I'm just writing the skeleton of it. Till end of file. Just keep repeating this process. Uh, and if. So if end of file. If not end of file, right? If not end of file. Uh, and this is my end. If. So such kind of a logic needs to be written. So process this one. After that, continue your loop for processing this. After that, processing this. So this logic needs to be written in the in the traditional way of programming, right? So here we are not going to write any of those. Okay, that's automatically taken care of. Take care by the Hadoop environment. Only thing that you need to care, care about is read your first line. Okay, so I'm going to write the structure now. Read your first line. Okay, before that, I said every system works on a key value pairing. So every input and output which we spoke about, where? Where is that guy now? Key value pairing. It's here. Yeah. So this input should have a key value. This output should have a key value. So key and a value, that's how exactly it works. So here also there should be a key value pairing. Here also there's a key value pairing, here also. So now let's let's deep dive into what exactly I mean by a key value pair, okay? Okay, so key value pair, pair, pair for map uh, input, okay? Now let's talk about mapper output as well okay so what exactly should be the key and the value pair for mapper input that's what we're going to first see okay, I'll, I'll give you guys some breathing space after this okay so key is going to be byte address over here so which exact address is this particular line standing okay so maybe it stands with some memory byte address so zero 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 one or something of that sort, okay? That's the byte address, think of that's the byte address. So here, key is going to be, after taking all this byte into consideration, it may end up like 0050, okay? So that's a byte address. So it's typically, I mean, it's, it's an operating system concept. So every every line or every data is having 
correlated with a relative byte address, right? So that's exactly what this address is. Let's let's make it a meaningful uh, 50 after let it be maybe 100. 100 and a space. And this is going to be 0, uh, 150. So now this is what? So this is a key for me. And this is a value for me. That's how exactly Hadoop is going to treat it. So the moment I get a complete file, okay, what Hadoop is going to treat is, I'm just going to talk about just one thing, right? So that's what I, I've discussed already. I need not bother about the rest of the file. I just need to treat, I just need to take into account only one single line of data, how exactly. And that remaining lines, Hadoop will treat exactly the same way for the remaining lines. So that's the beauty of Hadoop system. Okay. So what do we said? This byte address, automatically taken up this byte address. This may not be there in our file. Okay, I have only this data, but Hadoop automatically pick up, picks up that byte address as the key. And actual data is the complete value. This is complete value for me. Okay, that's how exactly Hadoop system shows my data, brings in my data in. All right, so that's that's done. So that's that's how exactly key value is going to work. Okay, the next one. Um, so that part is done. Okay, so now how I need to write logic? Anyone want to give a give a? Uh, how, how do you think now? What, what logic should I should I be writing? So for me to get this kind of a stuff, what sort of a logic I need to? I, I don't don't want a syntax or anything of that sort. Just a file offset or byte address. Yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. File offset. Yes, it's not file offset. It should be. It should be your. It should be a line. What exactly that line? Particular offset of that line. Okay, how exactly? Yeah, uh, hashing. No, uh, don't don't bring in uh, too much fundas. Just a very common common man's language. No hashing stuff. No stuff. Very very simple stuff. What what needs to be done? Split each line. Yeah, Mac has come up with a split each line based on regex expression. No no regex and all. <laughs> Yes, very simple stuff. Okay, each each line based on. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to. Great, yeah. So, no, uh, say space or tap. So right now you are not told me what. I mean, there is a key funda behind before doing this. Mike is right. Before doing that, I mean, you guys are also come up with a line offset. Yes, line offset. That's correct, Kashi. So before doing that tab stuff and all those things, one key differentiation I need to make, right? What exactly is that? How exactly I need to split my data based on key value and all, right? So now it's key. This is my key and this is my value, okay? So now I don't want to deal with this is byte address. Maybe in current scenario, for, for me to accomplish this particular stuff, I don't need to handle the this guy at all, right? I don't. I, don't, I'm, I really don't, don't care about the key stuff over here, right? This is key, and this this complete stuff is the value. So I do care about only value stuff. So I'm just going to bring in my value. I'm going to say, tell. Let let me store this particular value in um, temp underscore line. Okay, I'm I'm going to write a program. Just going to take this temp underscore line, and then store this value inside that. Okay, so let's let's make it like this. It's, it's a temporary code, okay? Just assigning the complete value inside temp underscore line, right? It's just pretty clear for everyone, right? And I'm again repeating the same stuff. You need not bother about what is happening with the delo. I mean, how you need to loop and all those things. Forget about it. You don't need to bother about any of those things. So when you write your program, I'm having in my mind, in your mind, one single line, how exactly are you going to process it? Rest, everything is taken care of by your Hadoop, okay? So this entire stuff is now stored into temp underscore, I mean temp line. Just assigning this value enti entirely, okay? This is nothing but this, this guy, this V. Let's let's make it as V itself. So V is stored directly into the temp line, okay? Now what should I be doing? Yeah, so remaining stuff, I guess, uh, Mac has took, spoken about it. So once I get it into a temp line, I'm going to split based on here. Yeah, yeah, so I'm going to split based on, so now I have a delimiter as a space over here. I'm just going to do a split based on space. So now split 
temp underscore line base space. This is my second line of code. Split temp underscore line based on space, right? Based on the space, right? In that case, what, what I'm going to get, I'm going to get it as an array kind of a thing, right? It will be like Hadoop, then, then developed, right? And then in the, oh, okay. Okay, fine. I, I just picked up the next next line. Sorry. But anyway, let's let's go ahead with that. Right? It should be space, not enter uh, enter with help. So the, the, the reason behind enter means it's going to be a new line, right? This is space. This is what we are talking about over here. This this small guy. All right. So now so we got in an array array sort of a thing. Okay. Now how you got it? Because of this particular command. Okay, once I do that. So this let this be an output for that stuff. How exactly the output will look like is what we're going to see over here. Okay, so that's done. So once I do that, now what I need to do is I just need to what's what's HN? Uh, what's HN? Adish? Uh, what should I be doing? Yeah, now I just need to assign. So now I got this particular guy. I think like this, uh, this time storing into temp array or something. Okay, temp array. So I, I got all these guys in the temp array. So now temp array of one, right? Temp array of one. Let's make it like this. Temporary of one equal to should be Hadoop, right? This is how it's going to look like. Okay. Temporary of two is going to be worse. Temporary of three is going to be developed. Four, five, six, like that, right? That's how it's, it's going to be. Fine. So, so let's make it like this. So that you know, it's each words are going to get stored inside the temporary, right? So hope it's clear. Uh, Sorry, all right, that's correct. Temporary of zero, right? Thanks for correcting that. Yeah, temporary of zero is going to be Hadoo, one is going to be. So, hope, hope things are fine with that. Thanks for correcting. All right, so that is done. Now, now what we need to do is take it out and take temporary of. So, you may have to just loop it, looping all this logic, leave, leave about all this, how, how do we loop and all this logic. So, now temporary of one. What the moment I do a temporary of one, what I'm going to get? Sorry, of zero, I'm going to get Hadoop, right? Take this and and put a one to it. That's it. Comma one. Okay. Now temp array of array of one and do a one. Okay. Now temp array of so yeah, temporary of two and a one. That's exactly what's going to happen. So temporary of one is containing Hadoop, Hadoop comma one. Now Hadoop comma one, was comma one, develop comma one. Exactly, I'm, I'm doing a mapping. That, that's correct. So this is the logic you're going to do in the mapping. So this is how the mapping is going to, and this is how your map output is going to, Come up. So this is exactly your map mapper output is going to come up, right? So now, so this is exactly the logic I'm going to write for this thing. So now, what you need to understand over here is one key thing that you need to understand over here is now what we said. Every stage, every phase of uh, it's already. Oh, we have only twenty minutes left. 10 minutes, is it? So every phase of map reduces runs with a structure key value pairing. Okay, now you should assume, so and that will get shifted, keep shifting. This key, key and the value will get, keep shifting in, in each phase of it, each phase of Hadoop's life cycle, okay? So here, what we said, it started with offsite address and the data. And now can you uh, assume what exactly should be over here? What should be the key and the value?
So this guy is going to be a key over here now. And this mapping, what we did, is a value. This guy is a key and this is a value. Right? This is a key and this is a value. So we don't consider every of data. I just need to consider only the first line over here also now. So this is a key and this is the value. And this is exactly how it's going to go for the which phase. After this mapper, what, what phase it should go for? Sort and shuffle. No, sort and shuffle. In between, we have sort and shuffle. After the sort and shuffle completion only, we are going to go. I mean, that's, that's exactly what this diagram says, right? So you can see that mapper, once the mapper is done, input is there, output is there, the output is directly going to go in as an input for the sort and shuffle. But what is the key funda? You're not going to write any code for the sort and shuffle phase. By the moment it gets this particular output data, the moment it gets this particular output data, immediately Hadoop architecture is going to come and play. It's going to do some magic. It's going to make in such a way that this key, based on this key value, Okay, based on this key value. So now what is key? This particular guy is a key for key for us, right? You're getting this concept, right? So this guy is a key for you now. This is a key, this is a key, this is a key, and this is the value. Now what it's gonna do is, it is based on the key, it's gonna pick up these guys, and it's gonna assign the value. And this is our magic phase, which is nothing but sort and shuffle. Let's, let's write the sort and shuffle over here, sort and shuffle. Okay, and this is where, all right. So what should happen is here, our space which we spoke about, Hadoop comma one comma one, okay. Or, or down somewhere we have this stuff, right, written. Yeah, this guy. This guy is the outcome of map. And so this is how you're gonna get the output without you writing any program, okay. So this is what the end output of the sort and shuffle phase is going to be, which is done automatically by our system. And now, so now another assumption, pretty simple assumption for you guys. What should be then the reducer phase? What should be the key and a value pairing now? What should be the key value stuff? With this example, can you leave up the state? What exactly should the key and the value? What should be the key for sort and the reducer phase now? Reducer, let's see, let me name this. Yeah, what should be the key? No, what should, uh, my question is what should be the key? Great, so yeah, just with the data, I mean not, just if you talk about this particular data, what, what data over here is correct, array element. So that array element is what? This temp, right? Individual data in the array. So this Hadoop is the individual data in the array, right? So this Hadoop is nothing but my key over here now, correct? Hadoop should be my key. Was by the, all these things are key. And value is going to be nothing but what's, what's going to be my value now over here? Correct, value is going to be one comma one. That's, 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 no, value is not going to be two. No, that's, that's wrong. Value is going to be, see, where is two over here? Where is two over here? So this is typical data, Hadoop one comma one, right? That's it. See, this are no magic going to happen. So this is your hard work, your program you're going to use, right? So in your program, when you did a mapper, you just got this one, and then your sort and shuffle include, your sort and shuffle did some magic, and then it made it like one comma one comma one, right? That's exactly what we spoke about. But reducer will get, no, we are, we are talking about reducer input. Reducer input over here. So reducer input cannot have a two. Reducer output should have a two, right? Right, so Hadoop is going to be my key and my value is going to be one comma one comma one comma how many ever ones you need. So this is going to be my key. And this guy is going to be my value, right? Hope everyone is clear with this, right? So this is my value guy, right? So now, since this is a key and this is value, so what is the, now I want your help to find out my, uh, yeah, uh, Mac has a question. I, I'm going to park that site, not now. We're going, to, we're going to talk about all those things in our later session, all right? So yeah, we're going to, but 
all those things are, will be including in our future sessions. Um, so now what should really happen here now? So I need your help to find out right a logic over here now. So this is our key, which you said, which is a value and how should my result should look like how to come up for okay. This is how my output result should look like. End output. Final output. Let me call it as final output, right? This is my final output. So what should I be doing to make that? So my data looks like, so what we said is Hadoop, one comma one comma one comma one. Okay, yeah, now fi final output should be, uh, I should have my final output looks like this. I'm um, no, I mean, don't, don't include more syntax and stuff like that. Just a simple pseudo code is what I'm looking for. So what should be, so we said this is key and this is value, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write the key as such. Okay. So print, I'm just going to write print, print key as it is, right? So basically nothing but Hadoop is nothing but my key. I'm going to print key exactly like that. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to sum up, sum up my value. Correct. That's all I need to do. I don't need to, yeah, maybe some sort of a for loop or two loop or something you might be doing or, but there are functions available just to sum it, sum it up, right? So just going to do a sum of my value, correct? So that's going to give me the result. So that's exactly how your Hadoop four. So one key fund again, I'm reminding you guys, just think about the first line, how exactly you need to process the first line when the mapper comes and the reducer comes, the remaining part of it automatically system takes care of doing the applying the logic. It's going to go for a do loop. It's going to go loop in a loop and then do a processing for you. So you need to bother about if you just get one line of data, how exactly you're going to process. That's all you need to have in your mind. That's how exactly mapper and reducer program going to work for you. Okay. Hope it's clear. So that's and driver. We're going to see and, and the sum and a guy who's going to going to do a combination of this sort. I mean, it's not sort of this mapper and reducer is what the driver is. That is pretty straightforward and simple. I, I just directly show it to you directly rather than make any, make, making any information how exactly it works. So all the configuration part of it, the configuration file, you need to have some sort of a structure in place, right? That is what the driver is doing. It's a very, very normally for every program, it'll be a standard driver. So you may have to do some very, very minor changes. That's it. So this is the key part you need to understand. So is the mapper and reducer logic and sort sort shuffle, how exactly it comes in place is clear with you guys. So we have only three minutes left now. So any, any doubt, anyone has any, any issues, anything that you didn't get? Uh, Saji, I'm Chandan here. Yeah, Chandan. Yeah. Uh, how many reducer will be there for uh, each split? Uh, yeah. So that is another topic which we will discuss. So right now understand each, each input split. Okay. So I, I'm assuming everyone knows what exactly input split is. So this is my block size, which we said the logical splitting is done. So each input split is going to have one mapper running. I, did you ask reducer or mapper? A reducer. No, each input split is going to have a mapper because mapper is the first guy, right? Each, each input split is going to have one mapper associated with it, right? That's our first process. After that, by default, it's going to be one single reducer, but you can increase the number of reducers to improve the performance. But by default, I'll have just one single reducer. Reducer is nothing but this guy. I can, but in case if I think, okay, no, I want to improve the process, I can run two or three reducer in place so that it, it's the, this, this processing will happen. But right now, let's make it keep straight, I mean, straightforward and simple. One single reducer by default, and that's exactly what the process was. So here, one, two, and three, three mapper and one reducer. That's how exactly it worked over here. Driver, driver, uh, I don't think we may have much time. Driver is straightforward stuff. Uh, which, which connects or which is just going to tell what exactly, how many number of reducer I need to have, how many number of mapper I need to run. All those configuration stuff will be kept in the driver. Yeah, that, that's exactly it is. So driver is just, just, um, okay. I mean, I know, I know some people, it's a late hour too. You may not get asleep unless and until what exactly is the uh, driver thing, right? So word count. Uh, map reduce example and map reduce. Let me just, just bring it. Um, does anyone have this? 
let me just show you the program. Yeah, so this is going to be exactly, so this is your driver. Okay, let's, let's, is everyone okay with Seth spending a couple of more minutes? Um, Hadoop and Hadoop, uh, Hadoop will be considered as the same or different. It, it will be different, completely different because it can't recognize edge, small edge or an edge, but you can write in your program. How exactly, right? You take that word, Make it uppercase and lowercase, completely make it, and then you can make it in the way you want it. <laughs> For the whole. <laughs> yeah, you might be in all spirit because, uh, but I am not in. <laughs> all right. So let's, let's, let's just very, very quickly see. This is exactly the program that you're going to write in terms of MapReduce. So just let me, let me show you. So this is the program. See, this much is the program that you're going to, I mean, this is also a little high, okay? I mean, I don't think you need to make it this complicated. So whoever has written it's a little complicated. So we can even make it much simpler than this. Maybe it's only two lines or three lines. You can make it only three lines. Okay, simplify it much, much more than this. Leave about all those things, standard structure, importing stuff and all those. So now why, what we have is, this is a mapper class, okay? This is a mapper class. Which, which, I mean, what, what I want you guys to do is relate to this diagram what we draw. See, mapper, reducer, and driver. So that's exactly what is that. This is a mapper class, okay? And this is a reducer class. Three, just two lines. See, this is a reducer class. And this is our driver class, which is going to be, see, some sort of a configuration. Job, dot, set, key, text. This, this are all the set we're going to learn in the future class. So, so see, what I said was set mapper class to map dot class. It's nothing but... See the name which I given for my mapper. What did I given the name? So this is my name. So I can even write it as Shaji map. Okay. So in that case, what should I have been writing over here? So Shaji map dot class. Here reduce map dot class. Reduce one. So why I'm specifically telling that? Just to make you understand, this is not a standard name. It's just a just a variable name given over here. That's all it is. So set mapper class to this one. Set reducer class. These are all configuration stuff. Okay. Which you're going to learn pretty soon. So this is the guy. Reducer guys. So what I will do is let me just bring you guys this one. I mean, those of you guys who wanted to wake up the whole night and learn how to go ahead. Good luck for you guys. Yeah, just you can have a look at how exactly that things work. So that's 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 how it is. Okay. So see, we have written a logic pseudocode over here. You remember how exactly we wrote the logic? See, just moving in this value is getting moved into a temporary line, temporary and then array and all those things. So this all depends, okay? You you can write your own logic the way you want it. So this is exactly what is happening. See, this is my this is my key. This is my value. This is again my key. This is again my value. So this is input key, input value. This is output key, output value. So four character is going to, four words are going to come in. Four key steps are going to get inside the mapper mapper program for me. So input key, input value. Output key, output value. So this is the value stuff, right? So I don't even care about this long writable stuff, which is a key for me. That's what we saw in our program. So we don't care about the key stuff. We are only storing this value, right? Because our need is that. Now see, can, you can see over here text, how exactly text is being converted, right? So that is directly going to go over here mapping. You can see that this long writable is going to go and come at us, this key. And this is value. I'm going to explain all these things in the next session also. Okay. I mean, because if you guys really wanted to go through one, so that's, that's why I'm, I mean, so this value will, is the one which is going to play around over here. This, this particular value. So you can see value dot string. It's converting value dot string, this guy to string and it's storing into a line. And this is a variable called as line. Okay. Convert that to string and store it into line. And now what is happening? This tokenizer. So we are doing with that space. We spoke about this, right? With the space, we need to we need to cut this, this one. This 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 is the one happening over here. Okay, the so string tokenizer is nothing but it's going to it's going to split this particular whatever is the variable, and then what what did we do? Assign it. How exactly they assign? Content dot context dot write. So we are going to dis, uh, explain about context dot write and all those things. But just look this word comma one. Okay, so this is exactly what it is. So this temp array of zero comma one. Okay, how how one is happening over here? One he would assign the one data one. See, see over here, private, final, static, 
non java guys leave about all those things no need to bother about this red part just think out only this line so he's directly making that one this particular variable this value is getting stored in that one and then it's writing word comma one okay just go through this once and then very simple one so whatever that one comma one comma one what we got at us just a while loop and then sum it up and that we are writing key at invaluable just just go through this and see hope how how does it works for you at uh, are you able to figure out what's happening okay so that's all uh, sorry it's a five minutes extra for you guys but yeah great that all you guys are keenly waiting nice to see that <laughs> so nothing more i have now so hope it may i mean you're able to get the concept clear at least in a high level view that makes me to have a good night's sleep for myself thinking that okay all right so being all that said we we'll good night for all you guys and speak to you on uh, next thursday right <laughs> great great because yes, i know that all right okay good night for all you guys yeah thank you is yes, that correct this thursday coming thursday